Today we will configure the so-called fiscal year variant. Therefore we navigate to the transaction code OB29. And as you can see, a kind of dialogue structure opens. And before we start, just for your information, the fiscal year itself is for sure the time period used to prepare our financial statements for our organization. And what we do in SAP is that we utilize this so-called fiscal year variant, which then states our posting periods where we can actually process financial related transactions. And this fiscal year variant is then in the end assigned to our company code or company codes via the global data as I've shown in another video. For now you can see here there are a lot of columns and actually to better understand this we create a new fiscal year variant from scratch so I'll call it ZA for instance. So as you can see the ID is two characters and alphanumeric. The description can be up to 30 characters and then you can see here we have some checkboxes. First of all, it says calendar year. This would indicate that our posting periods match the months of a calendar year. So for instance, one posting period would be for January, the second from February and so on up until December. Let's actually check this. The next column we see over here, let me actually expand the view, says year dependent. Year dependent would mean that the allocation of the posting periods to the calendar days must be made individually for each year. And this would only be necessary if the end of a period is not linked to a fixed calendar day. So for sure we can't just select here the calendar year and also year dependent. This doesn't make any sense because this one over here says that our posting periods will be according to the months of a calendar. While this year says that for each and every year the posting periods will differ regarding their start and end date. So as of now, we set it to calendar year and then you can see there are a couple of other columns. First of all, this indicator here, we can insert up to 12 periods. So the fiscal year itself is subdivided into 16 periods at max and 12 of those periods can be assigned to reflect our calendar year. So from January to December, we have 12 periods. And then we have the number of special periods, which can be up to four. This is the standard SAP settings. And those periods here are used for yen closing activities, so to say, reconciliation and so on, for instance. So in total, this can be a number of 16. However, as said, we don't necessarily need 12 posting periods over here. The same also counts for these special periods. So most importantly for now is for us that we have here the two character key, the 30 charts description, and we set it to a calendar year, which then reflects to the months of January up until December and we have up to four special periods. I could then click on this one and I for now could here navigate within the subnotes. However, for the periods we can't really state anything because the periods are now predefined matching the calendar years. So going from January till December in that case. If needed, we could insert here some period tags via new entries and this shortened fiscal year folder over here we can't access since this is only applicable for fiscal years with less than 12 months. So for now this is fine. You've seen how we create, we can create a fiscal year variant which reflects a calendar year and is year independent. So has always the same number of posting periods and always from January to December. Let's now explore the second case where we have a non-calendar fiscal year variant. In this case, our organization would follow a non-calendar year fiscal year, meaning that the posting periods need to be defined by assigning ending dates to each period. So let me show this right now. We click on new entries again, provide a two digit key, description, non-calendar fiscal year. This time for sure we do not select the calendar year indicator. We say number of posting periods, for instance, 12 as well, special periods four, click on enter. And this time we can actually access the periods and we must also do so because we need to provide the periods ourselves. So double click, then click on new entries. And now we can state our periods within the fiscal year. So let's assume that for our case, we will have a non-calendar fiscal year going from April to April. So meaning that our balance sheet and profit and loss statement and all the statements we need to publish are published in March and the new year starts in April. So therefore we need to reflect that a couple of months will not belong to our fiscal year. So for instance, we have month one, January with 31 days. 
which is in this case not period one because our period starts in April, but it is the period 10 of the previous financial year. And we need to indicate this with a year shift minus one. So let me actually fill this and then I think it makes more sense for February. We have 29 days, for instance, we have, this is period 11, also year shift minus one, then March, 31 days, period 12 minus one. And then we start with April. So this is the first month of our fiscal year, which is April. April has 30 days. It will be period one and the year shift will be zero. So there's no shift. And then we continue this list up to 12. So I will go for month five. Let me just insert this quickly. Insert the days as well. So in this case, it will be 31 with periods two, three, and the year shift is zero because this is our actual fiscal year we are utilizing. This would be then from April up until December, since we have the case where our fiscal year starts later than the calendar year. If for instance, we are in the year 2022 and post a transaction with financial entries in the month of January, so month one over here, this would still count for the old fiscal year. So for the fiscal year 2021 and not for a current fiscal year. And this way we could specify that from April ongoing, it will count for our fiscal year with a deviating or non-calendar year to be precise. And those three periods, if we post financial transactions over here, this will count for the peri previous year. Yeah, as always, we can also maintain here the period texts, the shortened fiscal year we cannot fill as we are using a whole year, so to say, and not a shortened fiscal year. And by the way, for February, we should always set this to 29 in those cases where we have a non-calendar year to account also for leap years. The third case would be, let me now go back to slash NOB29 to the landing page. The third case would be where we have a year dependent fiscal year variant. So in that case, let's go to new entries again, provide a key description and this time let's mark actually the year dependent fiscal year variant. We use the year dependent fiscal year variant when we have the case that not all of our fiscal years in one fiscal year variant have the same amount of posting periods, meaning that the posting periods will differ depending on the year we are looking at, or there are even some fiscal years with a different number of posting periods 